In this video, we're gonna set up our theme widgets in our design system. But what are theme widgets? Well, theme widgets are just reusable styles you set up for widgets. So you could have theme widgets for buttons or containers. And they're found over here in your theme settings in this last one, theme widgets. So I'm gonna show you how they work and then we'll set them up for our to-do app. So you just create a widget. Let's just say a button right here. We'll call it button green, create, and let's just change the text color to black and give it a little border, change that also to black. Okay, we can save that. And then when we go back to our canvas and we wanna add a button in there, we've got that button. And the first option up here is where we set our theme widgets and there it's applied. So you can think about these kind of as CSS classes if you're coming from the web, or just like we set up our typographic styles. So we have a bunch of different styles that we can apply to our type just in here. It's the same thing, but instead of for types for a bunch of different widgets. This also means that if you ever want to change that style, you don't have to go to every place where that button occurs and change it. You can just go back into your theme widget here and change whatever you want, and it will propagate throughout all the instances of your theme widgets in your project. Okay, so let's jump over to our Figma file and identify what theme widgets we need to make. All right, so here's our designs and how do we do this? How do we identify which things need to be theme widgets? Well, remember the purpose of these is to make reusable styles, styles that we can define once and then just apply so we don't have to duplicate our work. So we want to go through here and see which elements are duplicated. So we can see we've got this text input right here that's used all over the place. So that's one. We've also got this big green button we're using. That's a second one. And we've got this style of a background container that has this border and just the white background. So we could do that too. Now you may be wondering, hey, what about this thing? This is duplicated multiple times. Couldn't we make a theme widget out of this? And while that is duplicated, the difference is, is that these are collections of widgets. And this will be actually four different ones because we've got a text, we've got a checkbox. These need to be wrapped in a widget. So we would add these into a row. And then that row needs some background styling. So we'd wrap that all in a container. And remember, theme widgets are styles based on individual widgets, not collections of widgets. Flutterflow does have something to deal with these, and those are called components. Those are also reusable, and we'll get to that in a later video. Those are more complex because they involve not one widget, but multiple widgets, as well as encapsulating logic. Okay, but we're ready to set up our theme widgets now. So let's do this button first. So before we jump over, let's grab some of the values we know we're going to need. So first, we need to see what text style this is, and this is our label medium. We've already got our green color, so let's just look at the height here which is 70 pixels, and our border radius, which is 24. All right, let's delete our button right here, go into our theme settings, into our theme widgets. We can get rid of this button and just create a new one. This is going to be button green again. Let's add this button and create. And let's just switch this over to light mode because that's what we want. And let's set these values. And let's set our typography. So that's label medium, the height is going to be 70. And you can see we've got this little green link right here. Now, currently it's off. And that means whatever I set here won't be bound with the style. So when I apply it, this height won't be 70. This is just to see it in here, but we want it bounds with the style. So you can just click it on. Now, this is different for our width because at this point, I'm not sure all the places where I'm going to put this button and all of the parents that this button will find itself in. Well, why does that matter? Well, if I set the width to infinity and bind that to this button, if this button gets placed into a row, it could have an undefined width error. This is a common error in columns and rows where the row of the column is looking for its dimensions from its children, but the child is saying, give me everything you've got, so it throws an error. So I don't wanna bind this here, but I do wanna see it a little bit bigger, so I'm just gonna add in a value here just to see it, beautiful. Next, let's go down to this elevation, which is this shadow, and I don't want any. And let's set the border color 
to this black. And finally, our border radius to 24 pixels. Beautiful. And that's it. We can save it. First theme widget done. Let's go back over to Figma and grab whatever values we need for our text field, our text input. Okay, so for our text field, it's the same dimensions as our button. And then this hint text in here is set to label large. Same border and white background. Okay, so let's create another theme widget. We're gonna say text field white and scroll down to form elements and grab our text field. Once again, we'll just set this to 200 just so we can see it. Let's get a border in here because it's kind of hard to see and that's way down here. And in input border type, we want outline. The border radius is set to 24. Border color is going to be that black. It's going to be one pixel. We want it to be filled, so we just add that. That's going to be our pure white, which is our secondary background. And then we need to deal with this height here. And let's set our hint typography. So that's right here. And let's just write some hint text here. And you can see our label popped up. And we don't have a label in our design, so let's just get rid of it right here and we want to bind that and let's send our hint style and that is label large last thing is the height and we want that to be 70 pixels but if you go through here you can see that doesn't look like there is a height. And that's true, there isn't a height. We've gotta do some math. I promise it's not hard. So what we need to do is we need to control the height by using a combination of content padding, that's the space above the type here and below, and the type size. So currently our type size is set to 18, so we've got 18 pixels. So we just take 70 minus 18, that's 52, and then divide that by two for the top and the bottom. So 26, so we can add 26 on the top and 26 on the bottom. Once we set that content padding, we need to also set the left and the right padding. So we can just give that 24 pixels and 24 pixels. That's on this edge right here. If the text gets there, you would see it. Beautiful, and that's done. So save that. Finally, that white container. Let's take a look. So we use this container here. We'll use it here. We'll use it over here. And this is gonna be a pretty minimalistic or generic style because we just have the border and the background and the corner radius. So let's do that. Create a widget, container, white, container, Border radius will be 24, border width one, border color will be our primary tech black, and that's it. So let's see these in action. So if we go onto our page right here, and instead of going into our widgets like this, let's go into our tree right here and we can add them directly. So let's search for a text field and add that, and let's set that style. And we can't see that hint because we didn't bind the text to it. So we can just add in some hint text here. So email address, and let's add in our button and apply our style. And maybe this is a submit button. So let's just say submit and let's make it the full width and let's just give some spacing to our items to let them breathe. Beautiful. And that's how to set up your theme widgets for your design system in Flutterflow.